Today I've got a super varied episode for you. I'm taking you with me to go fabric shopping to the snow. I'll show you a fabric core. I'm in Chile by the way, so it's a little bit different. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And we're not going to see sewing today, but we're going to see fabric and some other things. But occasionally I get out of my house and I go somewhere else and <laughs> find it interesting to share. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Now I mentioned in the last one I filmed for you that I was traveling to Chile to be with my parents for a few days. So I'm in my parents house, I'm upstairs in a bedroom, I sort of made this little corner to film. I can't film outside because it's been really really cold. It's full on winter over here, not like the mild winter I brag about over there in Brazil where I live. So it's been a little bit different. So a few days ago I had a plane trip. Let me just show you my travel outfit, nothing too special. I'm actually wearing a jacket that's filled with a little bit of goose down I think that I bought when I left New Zealand. I haven't worn it since because I haven't needed it for warmth but it's really been saving me. Ready to wear flared pants with some Ugg boots and I've got Chasing Butterflies top underneath, the zebra print. That This is a pattern from Pattern Emporium that's super comfortable, nice and loose and beautiful to wear. So that's what I've got underneath. I think summer is nicer for sewing than winter is because you're so covered up in stuff. <laughs> On the plane ride, I was so fortunate to sleep for most of it because I find flying super stressful and super boring. And the most exciting part about getting to Chile when you're coming from Brazil is flying over the Andes mountains. Every time I've done that, it's been summer and there is some snow up there, but in the summer it's, it's minimal, not majestic like it is in the winter so I was really looking forward to that but for the whole crossing of the Andes it was so foggy outside you couldn't see a single thing and then suddenly it all cleared up and I'm going to show you what I saw I was very excited because we were almost about to finish crossing the Andes when it got really clear outside and you could see and it was like you were flying right next to the mountain it felt like you could just take your hand out of the window and like touch it right there <laughs> So amazing to see very very snowed in but then that was gone and quickly we were getting into Santiago and we were landing always getting to your own country if you've ever been a foreigner and you've lived away from your country is always really special because your family's there everything you know is there the language everything even my bank everything's in Chile so it's always really really great to feel the wheels landing on the earth that's great when I got to Santiago I met my dad at a hotel. We had fabric shopping planned for the next day so we stayed at that hotel and in the afternoon we went to these shopping malls and walked around exhausted after traveling but I always do that to myself. Early night sleep and then in the morning we went to the fabric district in Santiago. I go there every year. I'd never been in the winter though so all the last couple of times I've gone it's all summer fabrics. This time it's going to be different and let me show you a little clip of the trip there. It's very short. With my dad we stayed at a hotel sort of near to where the fabrics are. Not that near but not that far and my dad's ready with a little shopping trolley so he can carry all the fabrics and not wreck our bags. In Santiago if you've ever been in the winter, wherever you are, you're going to see the mountains with snow. So that's how that looks like on the background everywhere. It's a freezing, freezing day. My body's in shock. I actually had to buy that woolly hat and scarf as soon as I got there. And the first place we went to was a haberdashery. It was open. Uh, most of the shops were closed when we got there. We got there a little bit early. I spent some time looking at all the details in this shop. I did get buttons and knickknacks and things that I can't find in Brazil easily like these toggles to use for jackets. I got a few metal ones and some black ones there, so I'm all stocked up. I was running quite low, <laughs> had a lot of fun there with my dad. He's a trooper <laughs> going with me everywhere I go. Then some shops started to open, and in this one I did find some amazing sweater knits and Ponte Roma. I actually found some fabrics I had bought maybe two years ago. I found them again. I made a Fraser cardigan with that one, that blue one you saw there. Then I went to a shop where the salesmen call you mi amor. <laughs> it's really funny. And I found some really nice sweater knits there that the man is cutting for me. I was really limited in the space because I could only fit what goes into the trolley. I couldn't really take any more. And plus I'm traveling with a suitcase. So I was trying to find fabrics I can't really find easily in Brazil, like sweater knits. 
So what I need in Brazil, really hard to find, not many options there, but I always find a lot in Chile, makes sense because we have actual winter here. And I always tend to go to the same big shops here in the fabric district in Santiago, it's always super fun. There's my dad with a packed shopping trolley full of fabric and we're set to go. Going back to the south of Chile, looked like this, highway is really straight, you can see the mountains all the way all covered in snow and it was a lovely time with my dad just for a few hours enjoying the fabric. So next to me here I've got a pile of fabric. Most of them are neat fabrics. I think I only have one woven fabric here. Most of them are winter-ish fabrics <laughs> so it might be out of your context but I found some really nice ones. Let me show you the sweater knits first. I always find amazing sweater knits here. Look at this one. I think you saw the man cutting this out. It's got areas where it's got stripes, which I think is really cool. I think you could really play with pattern placement when you have a fabric like this. So the background is dark brown and then it's a beige. I think I got two meters of this. It would be a really nice sweater. So that's something I'm looking forward to. And I'm trying to put brown into my wardrobe a bit more, a bit more neutrals as well. I, I showed you pointing at this one, my dad filmed me. This one I couldn't leave the shop without because it's red. Well, most of it is red and then there's some print in there that's pretty discreet. I find, you know, if you see this from far away, it'll look so like something red. And red is my color, I love it. And so I got about two meters of this one. Then there's this other sweater knit that I found amazing. This one is a large scale print. Super, super, super drapey, lightweight, very stretchy. And look at this, the colors, brown and red, the most predominant ones with a bit of a black background there. Some gray, super nice, very pretty. I really like this one because it's got a bit of houndstooth print in there, but in different uh, sizes and it's red and gray. I think that's interesting to make a nice sweater. I love making beautiful sweaters and when it gets cold in Brazil this is all I need. Like I'll wear my bra and my sweater and, and I'm set. Like that's all I need. <laughs> so I'm always trying to find nice ones and nice lightweight soft ones that feel amazing on. That's what I love about shopping for fabric in person because you can really touch and feel not like when you buy online so it's an amazing experience to go there in person. This is the only one that's lighter weight. This is a double brush poly and it's got smaller stripes in gray and black. It's really hard for me to find double brush poly and I found over the years that I like sleeping in it when it gets cold. <laughs> I have a La Bella Donna from Love Notions that I made using double brush poly and I have a hood on it and that's like my go-to pyjama when it's cold. So I'd love to make some pajamas out of this one. Double brush poly is not as drapey as other fabrics, but it just feels so nice in the winter. In the summer it can get quite warm. So I see this more as a winter fabric and so pajamas, love this one. This one is extremely boring, but I got so much. I think I got like more than six yards because the price was amazing and it's a black rib knit. Hard to see, it's nice, it's stretchy, it's really soft. I can make so many things out of rib knit. Like, I don't think I could ever not have enough black rib knit because you can make tanks, t-shirts, dresses, whatever. Like this is so good. And I hadn't found such a nice soft one back home. So that's why I got so much of it. Now the next one is the only woven fabric I bought and it's a wool, but it's a lightweight wool. It's not like, it's not super, super thick. And this is 100% wool. This comes from a place in Chile that has long gone extinct. A mill in the south of Chile called Bella Vista Oveja Tome. That was the brand of the place where they made the fabric, well known for its walls. It's actually a very well known brand around South America in the past, but this place went into bankruptcy about 10 years ago maybe. But you still find some of these fabrics in some shops that have kept some stock. And so I got this one that's mainly navy and gray in the weave. Let me show you up close. It's so, so, so beautiful and it's so soft. And it's lighter weight, perfect for me for Brazil. I could like see a coda made, made out of this or some nice blazer that I could wear when it gets a little cooler. And for the lining, I bought this 100% cotton poplin. Really, really soft, really, really light. I think it's gonna go perfect inside. So this is gonna be a future project with an amazing fabric. This is premium, premium wool. It's so, so good. So I was very, very happy to find it. How much did it cost me? $10 a meter ish and I got two meters. So 
$20 for an amazing jacket. It's all going to be about the construction and the sewing and it's going to look so expensive, but it just cost me about 20 bucks. That's, what, that's what's amazing about finding fabrics like this that are so amazing and not so, so expensive. 100% wool, can't go wrong. This is a type of suede fabric. It's stretchy, mostly across the grain, but down the grain line, it's less stretchy. It still stretches in every direction, but not amazingly. And it's burgundy on screen. It's looking a horrible color because of the lighting in here. It's looking brown or something, but it's a really nice burgundy. <laughs> and I have some cuts of this fabric at home, but I'd never seen this color over there. So this is gonna make a nice top for winter as well. It's, I wouldn't make something for summer in it because it can get warm. And then the other three are Ponte Roma. No, there are actually four more pieces of Ponte Roma here. Let me show you the ones you haven't seen. This Ponte Roma is so soft. So, you know, I sometimes mention that there's different types of Ponte Roma blends, depends on the fabrics they use. This one has a high percentage of rayon in there. That's my favorite type of Ponte Roma, rayon and polyamide and spandex. And it's so incredibly soft. This type of fabric doesn't peel, it doesn't lose its color. And I would use it, you know, very happily. <laughs> so this is another burgundy, a little bit of a snake print going on there, but on screen it's looking brown, but it's actually burgundy and black. I can see a, a sheath dress made out of this, like a straight type of dress that you just pull on over your head. That's, what's that's, that's what that's for. And then I found this one, blue and black, very nice. I think it's a little bit of snake print as well, but not in your face. <laughs> I got so much of this. I think I got about three meters so I can make some type of sweater or blazer or hoodie or something with a zipper and a skirt. And the next two, you have already seen and I have already made garments, but I found the fabrics again and I think they are so pretty, I just bought them again. <laughs> so this blue one, is one I used two years ago to make a Fraser cardigan from Love Notions. And I used up all the amount I bought back then and I thought I'd never see the fabric again. And I was always kicking myself for not getting enough for a dress or a skirt. But now I have some, so I love this. And then the other one is the same, just in a different colorway. I got some more as well. And the one I had before, you've seen me make a Metra blazer from Love Notions with it. And same, I love it so much. And I always thought I should have gotten more, I should have gotten more. Now I have more. <laughs> and I'll be known to buy a lot of fabric if I really like it and make lots of lots of garments out of it. I don't really mind. You know, I just have to love the fabric because for me, sewing is about loving the fabric first. And then I figure out what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> so that's my fun little haul. Tell me what's your favorite in the comments. I love them all. I don't know how I'm gonna fit them in my suitcase though. So that's always a problem. So if the haul was all you're interested in and you're not remotely interested in anything else, then you can end your watching time over here. But if you wanna see something different, you can stay with me a little bit longer, not that long, <laughs> because I'm gonna share some of the things I've been up to over here with my parents. Such a different experience coming in the winter. Oh my gosh, you can't believe, like everything's different. Everything's freezing and cold and wet. Huge floods from the center to the south of Chile in these couple of days. Like huge floods there was a lot of damage done in some big cities around the country so we haven't had it that bad over here but it's been raining pretty much continuously non-stop you look outside and that's all you see and i'm just in shock because in brazil it rains a lot in the summer but when it's raining it's nice and warm outside you don't have to worry about getting wet you know if you get wet who cares but over here it's raining and it's freezing so that's that's weird this is where i usually film in the summer where the beautiful flowers are they look so sad and you know she could be inside in front of the fireplace but she decides to hang out outside where it's cold but look at her fur it gets so so full in the winter and then in the summer, she sheds a lot and she's got like half the fur she's got right now. <laughs> hey! My dad every year buys so many logs and then they just sit right here next to the fire. So the house is always super warm. And this goes all the way up to the second floor. So the second floor is warm too. So being in the house 
is always amazing. There have been small breaks in the rain. Uh, so on a weekend, we had a two days without rain and I was able to go to church and not get wet. Let me show you my handmade outfit. Well, actually just a jacket. <laughs> it's my Coda jacket from Love Notions that I made in wool last year. This is my Chanel-esque jacket that I made a lot of it by hand. All the trim, all the details are also sewn in by hand and it's beautiful. It's a really nice wool material with lining and it was perfect to wear over here. Underneath I'm wearing an Arlington top. I'll pull the line out of how that pattern looks like here but there's a mock turtleneck there. I've brought two of the ones I've made and I've been wearing them a lot. The little turtleneck's perfect. <laughs> Harder for me to wear over there back home. So that's what I've got underneath. So that's really nice. The pants, they're just ready to wear. Happy, happy with that outfit. And a few days ago, we were able to go to the snow. My parents, they live in the south. And from here, you can see a volcano. From the house, you can see the volcano. And it's an active volcano. It's always got smoke coming out. And I read that it's erupted about 12 times since 1952. So there's eruptions quite frequently, but everyone's happy with it. No one seems stressed about the volcano here. <laughs> and towards that area, towards the mountain, there are these big ski resorts. People come from other countries and they stay there and it's called Nevados de Chillán. So like snowy areas of Chillán. Chillán is a city that we're in here, but we're towards the outer part of the city, the rural area. So it was fun. Let me take you there if you're interested. It's going to be weird to see me in the snow <laughs> because I'm never there. I haven't seen snow in like more than 10 years. So it was really nice to go, even though it was freezing. Beautiful sunny day. You would think it's summer because it's so beautiful, but it's freezing. And we're headed to the snow. It's over an hour drive. And when we start getting into the snowy areas, I'm going to start filming and show you what it looks like. Uh, it should be a beautiful day up there in the snow. We were going up a mountain. There's still no snow though, but it's like foggy outside. It's not sunny like it was like a little while back. And everything's green all around us. We still have a few kilometers to go up the mountain. The mountain keeps going up there and the snow is over there. And we've stopped in a really cute restaurant here to have some pizza for lunch. So I have an Arlington top and the rain around me. It's one where I added little details to the caps and stuff. Even though no one can see, but I have buttons there. And this hat, this is me made. It's fully lined. I made it when I used to live in Bolivia with a thrifted wool skirt I found in the street markets. And then I lined it with some corduroy. And this is a free pattern I got somewhere back then many years ago. And it covers your ears and it's beautiful, love it. I've made many of these hats. I've got like five of them, but I never actually had the chance to wear them a lot. So nice. Look at all that fog on the top of the mountain. There's a little waterfall coming down from the mountain. There's snow on the edges of the street now, first time we see it. We still have a bit to climb up the mountain to be in full on snow. This is so beautiful, I hadn't seen snow in so long. that people stay at when they go to the ski resorts maybe you can see right there it's a couple of buildings and we're almost there this area is called Nevados de Chillán which means like snowy areas of Chillán which is the city where my parents live but this is towards the mountain we're just gonna hang around some common areas like we're not gonna go skiing and stuff
One of the toppers I brought here for my trip was my legging coat that I made a few years ago. This is a pattern from each to stitch that is beautiful. I've been able to wear it literally a handful of times only back home <laughs> in Brazil because it never gets that cold. And I just was obsessed about having footage of my coat in the snow. So here is my coat in the snow so you can see it. <laughs> I just wanted to have this footage of my coat in the snow. I actually did not wear my coat to go to the snow because you needed extra. This coat is made out of a very, very lightweight wool suiting, so it's appropriate for Brazil, but it wasn't warm enough to wear in the snow here. But beautiful, I have my footage of my coat in the snow. So there you go, and I'm happy. You're gonna see two more episodes from my parents' house over here. I've been planning and working behind the scenes, so you will see me soon <laughs> and then I'll be back home. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you soon. Bye!